got a call today that uh, from Lieberman's office saying, uh, we heard that you really weren't coming here to meet, you were coming here to have a sit-in and a hunger strike. And we said, what are you talking about? Um, we're coming for a meeting. And they said, well, we read it on your website. And I said, it can't be because we didn't have that on our website. Go back and look. And she said, I'm looking at it. And I said, look at the date. The date was when we went in on Monday because we were asking for a meeting. But when you gave us the meeting, we left. And now we're coming for the meeting. And uh, she got all nervous and said, hold on a minute. And then came back on the phone and said, uh, the meeting is canceled until further notice. So we're planning on going up there, asking once again for a meeting. We can do a, the lobby area, do a discussion ourselves, why we are meeting, what is the situation between the U.S. and Iran, what are some of the groups doing, uh, what kind of campaigns can they work on, and uh, then those of us who want to continue pressuring him for a meeting can do that. Well, good luck. I'm staying outside. Uh, uh, nice to meet you. Nice to hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So give yourself an applause. And what I think it shows is really just how hurt we feel about what the senator said on CBS about attacking Iran and how we feel that when elected officials say these kind of things, we need to respond to them. They need to know that that is just not acceptable and that doesn't represent the will of the American people. We're already in a horrible war in Iraq where our soldiers are dying every day, where we have taken a country of 24 million people and made millions of them refugees <coughs> internally, externally, hundreds of thousands of them killed, and now he's talking about bombing another country? So it is something that just compels us to react. Thank you. So we'll all... Mm. Oh, Let's move to the back, folks. There's lots, there's lots more. Okay, wait, 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 when everybody's in, then we'll, we'll begin. The meeting was canceled. We have your new meeting request. We scheduled from this morning when you were here. We have your new meeting request. And the scheduling staff has that. So they will get in touch with you. But as of today, you don't have a meeting. And that, that. Can you explain to this group that came right? from very far away, many of them, I understand that, why meeting our meeting today, was canceled? And I'm going to have to ask the can you tell? Area can you explain why the meeting was canceled? No, I'm not at a liberty to talk about that. So, children. So I, I, I came here to stop this rhetoric about bombing Iran. We, we can't even consider to. Sorry. Did the Iranians, by any chance, explain to you that Iran has not attacked another country in over 200 years? In over 200 years, they haven't attacked anyone. They're not a threat to Americans. They're beautiful. They love Americans. Everywhere I went, people told me how they loved America, and they loved Americans, and they welcomed me to their country, and they shook my hand, and they said they, they wished I would have a great time. There was a meeting. There was plans. The leadership of your organization was called this morning to explain the reasons why it had to be canceled. Why? Wait. They didn't explain. Well, why? I, I will why? say what they I, said. Okay, folks, I'm Please. sorry. You've been told that the meeting has been canceled. There is no reason for uh, any more for any of you to be in the office why? any longer. The o office, yes. Officer, oh, they've been told to leave Look by the beautiful, receptionist. Beautiful They're now being told. And I'm giving you the first warning. 
that you've already been advised that you need to leave. Right. Okay? So since the request has already been made, if you do not leave, you will be that is considered in violation and you will be considered um, as part of the charge for unlawful entry and you will be arrested as such. Now anyone that does not leave will be arrested for unlawful entry. The office manager has requested on behalf of the senator for you to leave and that's what I'm advising you as of now that you have to vacate the premises. Could is that clear? Meet with, um, the I cannot control who, and the rest of us I cannot control outside. their schedule. I'm giving you the directive and I'm giving you the first can warning. Can I ask support. her if anybody can meet and the rest of us will go outside? Yeah. Are you willing to uh, to entertain that question, ma'am? I would have to check to see if staff is available. Oh, please, for is it still your intention to have everyone have leave? To check. Is it still your intention to have We'll wait. I wait. At this point, everyone has to leave. I will allow this one woman to stay at this point for me to check if there's anyone available. I came to this country in 1973 during the summer of Watergate hearings and I fell in love with this country because people power was everywhere. I came straight to D.C. and Nixon was in trouble. He was threatened with impeachment and I fell in love with this country. That's why I moved here and look what we've got now. It's been downhill ever since. First we get Reagan, then we get Bush, then we get senators like him and McCain. Thank you. That's very true. Nadia, who's, who went in with Leslie? So Leslie went in with Ross Prezal, who's the um, Iranian who runs a group called CASMI that's against that intervention, time? military intervention. <coughs> Thank you. C-A-S-M-I, it's an acronym. Ray, can you call me? Yeah. And the other person is Robert Neiman, who runs a group called Just Foreign Policy and has been doing a lot of research on Iran. If you could stand up front, the three people who were inside, if you could come over here. Well, I, I thought it was a pretty good meeting, even though the main ingredient was missing, you know, that, that is Senator Lieberman. We didn't get an explanation why he refused to meet with us himself. And there were a lot of circular arguments, circular reasoning. You know, I tried to explain to them uh, that uh, uh, the American government's concerns about proliferation or Iranian involvement in Iraq and so on, that uh, I that I don't necessarily deny that there are some legitimate cons security concerns the United States has, but uh, I seriously questioned, I told them, whether attacking Iran, a military solution, was really a good solution. That we really emphasized our concern about the timing, that Senator Lehman w was making these the threats and statements in such a prominent way, at the very time when at long last, after so many years and so many demands from so many sectors of U.S. society and people around the world, the Iraq study group, the Europeans, the Iraqi government, asking for talks, diplomacy, negotiations between the United States and Iran. And finally, we now have such talks in a very limited way, but nonetheless, there are high-level talks taking place between the United States and, and Iran. And this is the moment that Senator Lieberman has chosen to make this very high profile uh, call for U.S. military aggression against Iran. And we argued that this is very counterproductive and suggested uh, to the staff that this is perceived by many people in the United States and around the world as an attempt to sabotage those negotiations and make them yeah. fail. I got to ask them to ask the senator to go to Iran and see for himself that you can't know what a country is like until you go there and that when I told people I was going to Iran they were either excited for me that I was willing to go to a place like Iran not knowing and or f afraid for me and I went there and I was treated so kindly and warmly and it was so beautiful and the people were so wonderful and I, I asked him to please ask Mr. Lieberman to go to Iran and see for himself.